Hi guys, welcome back. Today we'll be doing a sewing middle part tutorial. These will be the tools that you need to achieve this style. We'll be using four bundles of Glamour Fair Hair Company Loose Wave. You'll also need oil, needles and thread, curved needles and thread, and a closed mesh cap. I'm starting by parting out my client's perimeter. She wants to be able to wear a ponytail. I know how much I'm going to leave out based on the type of comb that I am using. When I feel like enough is left out to cover the tail end of the comb, that's how I know that is a good perimeter left out for her ponytail. Alright, here I am starting her perimeter braid. This braid is going to go all the way around, so I'll basically be repeating how I'm starting this braid on the other side and it'll meet up in the back on off to the... Either side, I usually do the left side because I do everything on the left side, even though I'm right-handed, but this braid will meet and connect on the other braid that looks similar to this side. So as you can see, I did go ahead and move that braid all the way around her head. I'm making sure I am braiding her tight enough to where the braid is steady and strong, but not tight enough to where it's like pulling once I start sewing her. We do not want to break her hair, regardless of the process. And here's where you basically see that I did repeat the other side. I had them connect on the left side and formed one braid. Now I'm going to go into her interior and make a anchor braid that will hold the, the wefts um, across the top of her head. So there's only going to be two anchor braids on both sides of her leave out. In terms of my anchor braid, I don't like them too big and I don't like them too small, so I try to go for a medium size. Always starting at the base of the braid, smaller, but increasingly getting bigger, but not too big. Your anchor braid should be strong enough to hold the width and not break your clients here at the same time. Okay, and this is where we start braiding her down. So what you're seeing me doing is braiding on her interior. So this is gonna be like the real first braid. And because I put the um, tail of that perimeter braid on the other side, I'm only gonna braid down to where this braid meets on the outer perimeter piece of um, her head. Just because I don't wanna take it all the way down, it's gonna throw off my braid pattern when it's time to start going around the head. So as you can see, I'm only braiding down to where the second braid, the real first braid, meets the outer perimeter braid. Okay, now we are parting out for our second braid. When you are parting, you want to part with the curve of the head. That just makes it a lot easier and it reduces any over direction in braids and pulling and tension. So here I am braiding my second braid on down. And this time, because I already have a braid already braided, and I know a lot of people struggle with this, so I'm gonna try to explain it the best I can. I'm only gonna braid halfway down or a little bit down to where I can pull up the braid that I previously braided, that tail end, and put it in there easily, seamlessly, without it bulking up. So I try to zoom in here. So as you see, I grab it, and then I just continue braiding down. And I make sure it's flat and braid it all the way down so that way it doesn't like bulk up on me or turn. When a braid turns, it actually like creates that little pulling effect and I don't like that. So I'm just gonna try to braid down as seamlessly as possible. In this braid, I'm also taking down to touch the outer perimeter braid once again because we are creating a foundation and it has to be even. Okay, same thing with my third braid, just a repeat, right? So we're braiding just enough to be able to pull up that second braid even with no bulkiness, no extra strands, no pulling. And I'm just gonna feed that into my third braid. And as you see, it's going in seamless, effortlessly. 
this is what's going to create her having a flat foundation so her install will look as natural as possible. You have to pull the braid up at a good amount, like a good point to where it's not bulking or slipping or else it will slip out. Or it will leave you with a lot of lumps and you don't want that in your sewing. Okay, in here, what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So I've already um, braided down the other side. I wish I would have got a clip uh, showing how I pulled, fed in that outer perimeter tail, but it's basically just like feeding in the rest of these braids. So with your last braid, the last braid has to be fed in on both sides. So you have two tails. There's my first one going up. That was the one that was able to be pulled up higher without it bulking. And then I move my camera so you guys can see the second one I'm about to feed in. So I'm, again, keep braiding down, keep braiding down. I'm not going to braid down too, too far because I still have to be able to pull that second tail up without it bulking. Boom. So now we have that second tail fed in and we have our last and final braid coming on down. And this is why it's important to create that outer perimeter braid because sometimes that braid will be the guide to how you are able to um, create the inside base and that last base is where you will start stitching and um, sewing okay this is everybody's favorite part after a braid down making sure you oil the scalp because my client will be in a protective style i want to make sure i'm feeding her um, scalp as much nutrients as possible while she is in this um sewing for the next few months and of course she'll you know apply the same um oil pattern at home in between her webs but it's just so soothing being able to um oil your client's scalp immediately after a breakdown they love that part now I'm sewing up that last little tail that I had out just to make sure that when I'm sewing, it doesn't stick out anywhere. And I did have to braid that tail all the way down just to get it seamlessly in there. And now I'm about to cut my thread. I like to use a net on all my sewings. These are the ones that I like to use. They are closed top. I do see a lot of people using the net that like comes like a, a sheet. I hate that thing. So I'm gonna stick with this one. I had it inside out so I had to flip it around. But this is my all time favorite net because it already has everything that it needs to grip onto your client's hair. All you have to do is really start sewing and at the end you'll just take it off or cut, cut the um, excess off. I also forgot to mention you will need a flat iron. You don't necessarily need one, but I like to use one to flatten out my ends and corners from the bundles being tied up. I also use this when I am um, turning corners because it flattens the corners. It makes it so much easier. So now I am installing her first whiff. I recently started going back to installing in the back. I usually install from the top all the way around. But the bag is just, I don't know, lately people been like, um, how do we say it? They've been investing in newer bundles that don't come with as much hair on them, right? So we have to make this hair work because hair gets expensive. So the best idea um, to make sure I can get all of her hair in and it's full was to start in the bag. So this is how I am triple knotting my thread. I got to a place where the thread was too short. So I inserted the new thread and knotted them together. And now I'm gonna pick up with continuing to sew. And I am double wefting these bundles. Um, I'm gonna show how I turn or how I hit corners with double wefting to make sure that they are still seamless and flat. Okay, so basically what I did was I 
even though I'm double westing, I dropped one of the bundles and went around to the corner. Now I'm about to pick up my flat iron, press it in, make sure it's nice and flat. And then I'm going to sew that corner down. So now it's only one. And then I'm going to pick up my, or I'm going to sew back towards the bundle that I left down and pick it up and keep double wefting all the way across until I do the other side. So again, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So since I only did one weft um, to hit that corner on that side, I have to make sure when I hit this left side of her, I'm also going to drop one weft to make sure I can round the corner and it's seamless. Okay, loves, so here we are. We finished out one bundle and look at how much hair she still had or look at how much left she still had. And I think we were only entering our second bundle. But again, this hair is kind of tricky because it's like if you sew too close, you won't have enough. If you sew too far, it'll be too gappy. But I didn't want to waste any space in her head. So here I am again, pressing out the ends of the weft to make sure that it is flat. And how I'm going to install this weft to meet up with the weft that I just finished, not starting a whole new row. I'm going to take those, take the sides that I am about to begin, and I'm going to place it right where I ended. And I'm going to use my previous uh, thread to loop the two together. So I'm going to tie a base after I put this one in. I'm just going to like tie a base tight enough to where you won't even be able to tell that they were two separate bundles. It's going to all flow in together. And I like to sew behind the braid just to make sure that it's staying as flat as possible. I know depending on the braid pattern, sometimes it can be a little hard, but as much as I can, I try to um, sew behind the braid. And that helps with your sewings lasting as well. And I am pulling tight just to make sure 
that there's no looseness in my thread that will um, pull if she decided to comb through her hair. Alright, here I am again. I was double wefting, dropped my one of my wefts, and now I am going to um, go ahead and curve up this side. Because I want this sewing as flat as possible. I don't want any knots, any bumps, nothing, nowhere. So, as you can see, I'm going up the side. I have that top track from the double wefting um, dropped. And again, just going behind um, her braid. When I get to that outer perimeter braid, the one that is going to like basically be the curve that I need to um, make it flat, I'm going to bend it and sew under the braid so that way it's not sitting on top of the braid. I only sew um, completely under the braid um, on the outer perimeter. So when she pulls it up, it'll be a seamless pull. And you guys will see that as well. Here we are. I have that corner piece nice and bent, pressed out a little bit. And now I am forcing the weft under her outer braid.
All right, now we are about to sew her outer perimeter. Um, this is where this closing track is. Always sew it to your anchor braid. And the way I sew to the anchor braid, I don't loop the needle like I do the entire rest of the sewing. I go outside of the needle. So in essence, instead of like pulling the needle through the thread, I go behind it. And this is how I ensure that the sewing does not move off her anchors. So while y'all are watching, I'm gonna tell y'all about this hair. This hair is actually fire, I love it. However, like, you know, most companies now, raw hair is like top notch. And because it is raw, usually unprocessed, it doesn't have any extra fibers in it. So you're basically getting like a full head of natural unprocessed hair. Which means like when it's time for us to install these bundles, you're gonna need more than three usually. Nine times out of 10, you're going to need more than three bundles. And the funny thing is she originally purchased three bundles for her first sewing that we did. And that wasn't enough. Like her sewing was so gappy, but she was like, okay, I'll just go back and get another one. When she walked in this time to get another one, they were like, hey, you're back. Yeah, da, 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 da. And she was like, yeah, it wasn't enough. She was like, yeah, most people usually get five or six bundles. And I'm like, five or six bundles, that's a lot. I'm thinking this four would have been, like, perfect. Mm, honestly, it was almost perfect. Like, we literally had a small, like, a two-inch gap. But because I have to, you know, work magic, I did what I did. I just sewed her outer track in order to be able to, like, cover her anchors but still you know seamlessly flow into the rest of her sewing so moral of the story if you are purchasing raw hair especially especially from glamour fair hair company make sure you get about five or six bundles because the rawness is like truly raw there is no extra anything there's no extra nothing baby you gonna need all of those bundles kind of see like where it's kind of gappy a little bit that's where I'm talking about like honestly four bundles of I know usually like Brazilian or anything else I think it would have honestly been enough like I've done enough sewings and used three bundles so four with this technique back to back it was just like why is there still a gap but because we make it work like I said I filled in um the rest of her gaps with the leftover hair from this track that I'm going around with. So I only closed up that little end, went all the way around, and then I went back in and filled in where I could, where it made the most sense to put that track. Everything else was gonna be covered by her leave out, which both of us were very understanding, like, hey, it is what it is. And like I say, um, if you're gonna be using Glamour Fair, just make sure you get five or six bundles. I know to tell my clients, um, because they love some good, here um to go ahead and do five or six bottles raw okay now we are done sewing and i'm just going to cut off the excess cap um this is what i'm talking about like this is so much easier to me than trying to have your client hold down a sheet of net like that's crazy and my client is relaxed so you can see the difference in texture of her hair in um the bundles but they still you know blend it really well so now i'm pressing out her leave out um she just got a relaxer about two and a half weeks ago so really it was just like a, a light pass just to get the twist um texture out from when i had her tied up <laughs>
okay i know i didn't make this a layer and styling tutorial but this is how i layer her hair i just chose where her natural leave out was and but decided to just go down on the hair um pulling off a little bit at a time because she still had layers from or she already had layers from her previous sewing but we want to still reuse this hair so we're not pulling off that much hair because then she's gonna have to buy more and that's a no-no also this is great to mention i just realized that people didn't understand this if your hair is long it is very well let me say it like this if your hair is long and you are not willing to cut your hair it is almost impossible to still create a deep layered effect so your layers might just be longer because you are not willing to cut your hair and i need people to understand that because i cannot cut your leave out without your permission just to give you layers like the style might be cute but when you take your hair out you're going to be looking at me like what did you do so if you are looking for like deeper layers just know that if you already have a shorter leave out okay it works maybe if you have a longer leave out you are nine times out of ten going to have to end up cutting out some of your hair and that decision will be left up to you i'm just a stylist all right now it's time to test that ponytail method so look at that y'all do y'all see like not one track is visible um we put it up in a ponytail on both sides it's nice and full she has a full ponytail and it's seamless you don't see any of her tracks nowhere so a one And now I'm going to throw some quick curls in her. She had to leave. Um, she had to go to work. So um, I couldn't really style her the way I really wanted to. But these still, the, the loose curls still ate down. Um, I'm going to use my T3 iron. I can't remember which barrel size this is. But this is the one I like to use anyway because it got the little, the little clip on it. But I just gave her some quick loose curls. And we were on about our day. all right here we are combing out those curls look at that real nice and flawless and this is why i love this hair because i swear it curls so good every time i curl like raw hair it just settles the curls so much better and this is a little trick that i learned um if you don't like using edge control use a light hair spray and like a edge brush a hot blow dryer and smooth it in and do y'all see do y'all see that that is so cute to me i just love these like loose wave vibes like uh one of my favorite styles to do 
I wish we had more time to like get better content and you see those layers like just kind of blending in I think next time I'm gonna add her just a few more um, but that's all y'all thanks for watching